The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next, Daniel Kalinda demystifies spiritual warfare. This is the Bible. If, if you don't believe in the spiritual world, you cannot believe this book because this book is about a spiritual world that we are all part of. And so, yeah, it's always been there, but now I feel like in many ways the veil has been torn off and we are, we are beginning to see right in front of our eyes the power of the enemy at work. It's all around us. We can see it. We can feel it. We realize there is a real war that's being fought. Well, Betty, you and I have spent a, a lot of time in Africa on the mission fields. And we've seen the power of God's love through the missionaries open the door where millions of people come to Christ. I'm James Robinson. Betty and I welcome you to life today because this whole ministry is about sharing life today and every day all over the world. And uh, Reinhard Bonnke was an evangelist that had millions of people in attendance. A, a million people come to Christ, basically, in a day, in a moment. And it was unbelievable. Uh, Reinhardt gave his uh, first big tents to Peter Pretorius, the missionary that Betty and I started working with 30 years ago to save the lives of, I don't know, African nations reported over 15 million of their children's lives. That means you did it. Because Peter said, if we can stay here and do it, and you'll just keep us here, please. And boy, have you done it. Well, Reinhard Monkey was here many times. Thank you for your prayers for him. He's with the Lord. His successor, who he knew would be preaching, is Daniel Kalinda. Daniel has written a book called Slaying Dragons. The anointing on him, and this is me looking in, and I've, I've said it to Daniel, and I've said it to Reinhardt. I think he's got a double portion anointing, and I believe it. If this studio was filled like it would normally be, people would be standing, mm -hmm. applauding because they know it's true. And the, the studio is not filled, but it's filled with God's presence. Yes. And uh, Daniel, Kalinda, uh, slaying dragons, boy, they need to be slayed. I, I know it had to be tough to say goodbye to Reinhardt. Yeah, it was. You know, I was with Reinhardt for almost 15 years, and uh, some of the most you know, wonderful days of my life were spent on the road with him. Many of those years I was literally with him on the road more than I was at home with my family. Sure. And so um, saying goodbye to him, the Apostle Paul said, you don't have very many fathers. And that's how I felt about Reinhardt. He was more than a mentor or just a, a great evangelist. He was like a, like a spiritual father to me. So we miss him, but we continue. We carry on the work. God buries his workers, but his work carries on. So we go forward. I want to know why you felt so impressed to write this because it did come out. He finished it before the COVID broke out. But you, you talk about some things that are very, very uh, important. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting that uh, you wanted people to understand that we're in a, in a cosmic battle, but you also used a German word that yeah. I can't <laughs> pronounce, and it's, it's the fourth chapter. Tell, tell me yeah. what that is. It's the word zeitgeist, which is uh, actually it's made its way into English now. A lot of people in, are using that word in English, but the translation literally is... Uh, is time spirit, Zeit, uh, time, Geist, spirit. And so uh, maybe a better translation would be a, the spirit of the times or a more biblical way to say it would be the spirit of the age. And um, you know, that was one of the chapters, honestly, I think I could have written a whole book just on that chapter. What's happening in the world now, actually the book is more relevant now than it was when I wrote it because I wrote it before the, the COVID outbreak and all this stuff. And many of the things I wrote about, now we are seeing those things happening very, very clearly. There's always been a sense uh, that, that there have been these demonic powers mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Even back when you read the book of Daniel, you hear uh, you know, Daniel dealing with the prince of, the, of Persia, who is this spiritual power over the land that's working through the puppet, which is the actual prince of, of Persia. You see this connection between the higher ranks of what's happening in the spiritual world and what happens on ground level. These things are not disconnected. And the apostle Paul tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Okay, so that's very high level stuff, powers 
powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's always been this way. This is the biblical worldview, by the way. If you're watching this and you think, oh, this is superstition, this is Harry Potter. No, this is the Bible. If, if you don't believe in the spiritual world, you cannot believe this book because this book is about a spiritual world that we are all part of. And so, yeah, it's always been there, but now I feel like in many ways the veil has been torn off and we are, we are beginning to see right in front of our eyes the power of the enemy at work. It's all around us. We can see it. We can feel it. We realize there is a real war that's being fought. And, you know, we're in the United States right now. There's a war being fought for the soul of America. No question. And I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a young guy. I'm, I'm not even 40 years old yet. But even in my lifetime, I've never seen or felt anything like this before. It's the, 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 the air is electric. There is a battle that's waging right now. And I feel that what happens this week, what's happening right now in this season, could set the trajectory of our nation for the next 30, 40, 50 years, maybe until the Lord comes. And from around the world, we're hearing that what happens here in the United States determines so much what happens around the world, especially as it relates to freedom, yes. as it relates to life and truth and all the things that are important related to family, to yeah. faith. Uh, it's all under attack. And I feel like the enemy's crowd, you know, when uh, Joel was talking about these locusts that came in and devoured, as the COVID did, so mm -hmm. much of the benefits of freedom and health and all of that comes on as a destroyer, that the enemy walks in step in sync. When you look out, Daniel, it looks like the deceiver's crowd, the crowd that's following the father of lies, they seem to be more sold out and devoted mm -hmm. to their father's will, the father of lies, yeah. than the church is to the father's will and to what Jesus told us we're here for. We're supposed to be more than conquerors. Yes. We're supposed to be effective witnesses and ambassadors for Christ. And I'm telling you right now, the times demand that we become sold out. We yes. should be more sold out to our Father's purpose and His will being done on earth than allowing the enemy to trample the will of God under the feet of godless men and godless thinking. Mm -hmm. Don't you believe it's time for us to arise and shine with God's glory on us? Are you calling people to that kind of spiritual battle with a more than conqueror attitude because that's what I'm calling for. Yeah. That's what yeah. I believe God's calling for. I think it's the only thing that will stop the intentions of the enemy to destroy everything pertaining to life and godliness. Isn't that what the devil's up to? Yes. Isn't that what these dragons are trying to do? And aren't we supposed to stop them? Yeah, one of the great tragedies has been that the church has adopted this, what I call an escapist mentality, which is our get point is just to, yeah, hang on until we can get out of this soul forsaken world by the skin of our teeth. By the way, That's there, there shouldn't be any thing. skin on your teeth. <laughs> but, I mean, we know we've got eternity forever. Rejoice yes, in it. Yes. I, I don't even believe we actually die. Better now we're talking uh -huh. about this. You know, there, we don't experience death. Yes. We just go to sleep and we just wake up in another <laughs> realm. It's like we got to sleep on the sofa and woke up in the father's bedroom. Yes. We're just right there with you. I mean, this is amazing what we have, but that's not what we're living for. Yes. That's what's living in us and we'll live there forever. We need to do something now yes. to overcome the intention of the deceiver. I've been <laughs> shout out, trying to be calm about it. Look, <laughs> we've got to stand up. Yes. We've got to speak up. We've got to be a light that refuses to be hidden. Excuse me. Help me. Yeah. Help me, Dad. Yeah, I, I talked to, to one guy, uh, this is a couple of years ago, and, and um, he said to me, I, I said, why do you think we're all still here in, in, on the earth? Why didn't Jesus rapture us all? If, that, if the whole point is to get out of here, why didn't he take us all to why heaven the he moment he resurrected? Why another day? Exactly. The, and you know what the guy said to me? He said, because he's preparing our mansions in heaven. And I thought... <laughs> I thought, well, number one, he created the whole universe in six days. <laughs> number two, he, he's been around since eternity. Couldn't he have thought ahead and have those mansions prepared? <laughs> and advanced? What, what, are we really waiting for a construction project no. to get finished in heaven? No. No, obviously there is a purpose that we have on this earth to fulfill. That's why we're here. And we have been expected to occupy this planet Absolutely. until he comes. And so the goal is not to get believers to heaven. That wasn't the reason Jesus died on the cross. No. He could have done that 
automatically. He could have created us in heaven to believe with, to, to begin with. Jesus died to get heaven into the earth. Absolutely. And we are the channels through which heaven comes. That's why we get born again, so that the kingdom of heaven can flow into us and through us into the world around. And you know, they were supposed to oversee the Garden of Eden. The whole planet's God's garden. Heaven yes. and earth declares his glory. This is God's planet. This is God's earth. We don't have to give it to the devil on our watch. Mm -hmm. Betty, jump in here because <laughs> well, you, just, you are so concerned about I what am. needs to happen and concerned about what shouldn't be happening. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying as Christians. We we should get some backbone yeah. about us. We should have the strength and that God gives us. And to, what he wants us to do is to get out there and be his witnesses. Yes. But it's not through just, oh, we're supposed to be nice. Yeah. We're supposed to be kind. Don't you think we have a right as Christians to be angry at yes. what we see the enemy doing? We do. I, I was asked just recently to speak to a, um, a conference of all um, mass campaign evangelists. You, you'll appreciate this because mm -hmm. you, you've done so much of that too. And the, and the theme that I was asked to speak on was this, what is happening in the world and what should we do about it? And I'll tell you what I, what I told those guys, the, men and women, both. I told them, look, this is not the time for us to be shutting the doors and hiding under the bed until this thing blows over. You know, in the book of Esther, you remember Esther, you know, she's this poor peasant girl. She's oppressed. She's, you know, comes from a low socioeconomic background. She gets lifted up to the palace overnight. And then there, there's this, this combination of her being lifted up to that place and Haman coming up with this plan to exterminate the Jews. Mordecai sends the message to Esther, help us. And she begins to waver. Should I, in such a dangerous moment, should I step out and put my neck on the line? And Mordecai sends this word to her. He, and we always talk about the, I've come into the kingdom for such a time as this part of the verse. What we don't talk about is this, that Mordecai says, don't flatter yourself that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all of the other Jews. Mm -hmm. For if you keep quiet at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from somewhere else, but you and your father's house will perish. Mm -hmm. But who knows but that you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. In wow. other words, this is not the time for you to hide and to cower and to wait for this to blow over. The purpose for which you were put in the palace is this moment. And I say that to the church. I say that to the evangelists. We as the church of Jesus Christ have never, have never been more needed by the world than we are right now. It's time for us in this moment to stand up, to make our voices heard, to be salt, to be light in the darkness for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And this is the time that we arise and shine with yes. his glory on us. And we show people the radiant effect of being able to see clearly what is happening. You're seeing the fruit of the enemy, mm -hmm. the hatred, the hostility. Imagine here, here we are yelling when somebody hurts a police officer and they take him to the hospital yelling uh, that we hope you die. This is happening. Here. And then just randomly walking up and just taking somebody out. This horror. He's a murderer. Yes. He is the father of all all lies and and the lies of the enemy are prevailing too often in the places of highest authority and power and and Daniel in our country we've got the opportunity and the responsibility to choose wisely those who lead and we lead according to principles we're voting so much more anytime we choose a leader whether it's in your local community a school board or whether it's the person you spend your life with when you get married. You want to choose someone that understands the importance of the unshakable principles of a rock-solid foundation upon which everything that stands is built. Mm -hmm. And that foundation is not just hearing the Word or even declaring the Word, but building on the Word of God. Not just hearing what He says, hearers of the word, but doers of the word. We do what Jesus says. Betty, our life, our family mm -hmm. is built on a solid foundation. It's the only way it can survive the assault of the deceiver, the dragons that are coming continually to tear up every relationship. You know, people say, well, y'all been married, you know, 57 years. Y'all get along pretty good. Has he attacked our relationship? Absolutely. He takes every opportune moment to attack us in all areas mm -hmm. of our life. So we have to have that shield of faith on. We have to have the armor that God provides us yes. with through his truth and his love and his stamina and, and not to bow down to the Try to the attacks of the enemy. If we recognize him, that's the key, is knowing God well enough through his word. These are, these are orders for yes. us. 
They're not just a book that we read. We have to bring them into our heart and, and, and into our spirit and then let it come alive in us. Yeah. God has prepared us for this time. Yeah. yeah, these aren't suggestions. This isn't 10 suggestions <laughs> and the Word of God is not just some good ideas. Mm -hmm. He's giving us transforming truth upon which we build. It's an unshakable yes. foundation, not an unassaulted uh, a life or foundation. Everything the enemy throws, he's throwing primarily at the believers, at the church, at those who know the truth. That's where the fury of his assault is. And that is one reason why if you're going to slay dragons, you've got to suit up in the armor of God. Mm -hmm. You've got a, a sword here and mm -hmm. the serpent there, but you take the sword of the Lord to destroy his intentions. No. He won't be destroyed. His effectiveness is destroyed. Someday God will throw him along with all the other demons and hellish, empty, uh, horrible uh, forces there are in the world. He will throw them away. But right now they're here and they do test us and they test our heart. God didn't make us robots. He didn't make us puppets. He wanted us to know we can live with our fists clenched in his face but he loves us too much not to tell us the consequences of living with our fists clenched in the face of the Holy God. We're seeing the consequences of casting aside what God says with all the horrific things that are beginning to build in momentum to where it looks like hell on earth. Yeah. But the church, the body of Christ, suited up, can slay dragons. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to get across in this book? It is, and you used an important word, which is foundations. And that's what I believe we're contending for right now. It's not even just about our own personal battles. We're contending for the foundations of the society. The Western world is under attack right now. And the Bible says if the foundations be removed, what can the righteous do? You know, even in, like in this election cycle, it's amazing to me how Christians, you know, if every Christian would vote the principles of the word of God, we'd dominate every election every time. No question. Well, we're, truth would dominate. Yeah. It wouldn't be like we, a party, yeah. Democrat, yeah. Republican, conservative, or whatever. I mean, Quit Christians that. would. Just, yeah. just it's, it's, it's not the, it's the principles yes. that we hold dear and we build on that the nation builds securely yes. and safely on, where we're legitimately meeting needs, not making people dependent upon some source that every farm of Caesar and Pharaoh and the devil wants you depending on. We can live free as overseers and overcomers. And that's what slaying dragons is. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've been seeking to slay dragons for yeah. a long time <laughs> and inspire the church to do it. I believe church people are gonna rise up and do it. Are you beginning to see glimpses of his glory in people rising yeah, up? Yeah, in fact, I, uh, I just got a message two days ago from a lady that said, she sent us a message said that she, there was a person manifesting a demon in her church. I have a chapter in that about how to cast out demons. She said, I went through the chapter point by point. The lady got delivered. The demon came out. She was rejoicing. <laughs> like this thing works. We have the victory. He's yeah. under our feet. Jesus won this battle already right. 2,000 years ago. It's time for us to walk it out. You're going to be doing crusades primarily in Africa. Yes. Millions of people be coming and millions will come to Christ. So if people wanted to support you, maybe even go and be a part of something you're doing, what website do they go to? Uh, www.cfan.org. That stands for Christ for All Nations. CFAN.org. All right, there it is on the screen. And if you'd like to get the book and get it online, it's in the bookstores. I'll tell you what we'll do. Right now, and, and I know you know the importance of this, we are feeding the hungry, yes. primarily in Africa because the need is so great. And with the COVID, the supply lines and the food and oh. so forth has been limited even in the production of it. So it's more serious than yeah. ever. I want you to listen. And by the way, we'll gladly send you this book because we want to help inspire you to slay dragons. And we are slaying the dragon of starvation and malnutrition with the love of God. And you are going to hear this in Peter Pretorius' son, Esau, and know you are the miracle that not only Esau is asking you to be, but God is enabling us to be. Watch prayerfully. You, know, you might have heard me refer before to malnutrition as the silent killer. And that's because it comes like a thief in the night and it steals a child's life away silently. Many times an unknown and nameless child, another small little grave, but alive. A life that is lost because of something that we can so simply solve. 
a life stolen away simply because there wasn't enough food. The desperation you can see written all over this child because this little body is fighting a fight that chances are it will probably lose. A fight of life and death. It's a tragedy of epic proportion because more than 200,000 of these children die each and every month on the continent of Africa. And it can actually be changed pretty simply. If we can get to these villages where this child comes from, and we can get mission feeding into those villages, what we're able to ensure is that we wind that clock back. We retell that story. Where instead of going to bed without a meal that day, that child goes to bed having received an orange bowl filled with the most nutritious food, nourishing its body and saving its life. That's why we say mission feeding saves lives because it does. But mission feeding doesn't happen just by us being here. Saving this child's life doesn't happen because of us. It happens because of you. Please do whatever you can do and give the very best gift that you can give today. Give the gift of life. Jesus, every one of those lives are so precious. Please help our viewers to realize we can give them life. I, I know you heard the heart of God through Esau. Betty, what's going on when you look at these precious little children that we've looked at and watched for 30 years? Well, most of all, I want you to hear what Esau said about it's up to you joining with us to make the difference in the lives of these precious little ones. I saw Esau holding the little tiny hand of that precious one that's grasping for air, grasping for life. And I thought, when a child is born, you look at that little baby and you hold their feet, their hands, you look at their little toes, you want to make sure they're all there and that baby's precious and knows that, and knows that they're loved. But you've also seen those that hold the hands of their loved ones that haven't made it, and at their dying moment, you're holding their hands and you're trying to comfort them. Let's please hold the hands of these precious little ones. Let's give them a chance to grow up and be strong and to be able to play and laugh. Please join with us. Make that difference in each child's life. Honey, I not only heard a, a mother's heart and a grandmother's heart, no great-grandmother's heart. It's uh, even more than that. It's, uh, it's the heart of God. Um, please, please hear what Esau said. The missionaries wouldn't even be able to stay there if it were not for our support. We, we can literally feed. This is not total child care. This is life-saving food and nourishment. We can feed it three children for the next months for $30, five for 50, and for $100, 10 children for the next months, and open the door to take the gospel to them in word because we've shown them the power of the gospel in love. You could hear that in Esau's voice. The son of a missionary left an opportunity to play for South Africa in rugby. He was really good, but he served with his dad. And right now he's evangelizing, just like Reinhard Bonnke did and, and like Daniel's doing. The love of God through you makes this possible. Right now during this mission feeding and the ability to get food in has been hit hard by the COVID. We really need a miracle outpouring of support. We have some gifts to send you that are gonna really bless you. But would you right now go and get your bank card and use it like a check? Would you go online or would you dial that number? Make a gift of 30, 50, or 100? If you could give $1,000, you'd be feeding 100. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Please, right now, you do whatever you can. Please reach out and touch with love. Today, on top of the daily fight for life and food, families and children across Africa are now forced to deal with the challenges of a global health crisis. 
Because of COVID-19, food scarcity has increased drastically, and the fear of dying from lack of food is far greater than the virus itself. Even in these unprecedented times, Mission Feeding won't stop. With your help, Mission Feeding will continue to be a daily source of food, encouragement, and health for the 350,000 children counting on us. Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 that will help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children for three full months. With your gift, we'll send you 40 days of healing promises. This beautiful hardcover devotional will encourage you in your faith as you dive deep into the healing promises that are yours in Jesus' name. With your gift of $100 or more, please request a blessings for your home bowls and tea towels set. This set of bowls and two beautifully designed tea towels will make a wonderful addition to your home and serve as a reminder of your help in blessing others as a friend of life. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our commemorative bronze sculpture, A Mother's Strength. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. You are, you're going to be doing what these little bubbles say. Uh, life, live it, give it, but look at this, share life in word and deed. And boy, that's what you're doing. If you'd like to have Slain Dragons by one of the most anointed evangelists on the face of this earth, Daniel Kalinda, well, we'll happily send it to you. You just help us feed those precious children. Daniel, we love you. Father, you bless this ministry beyond anything even Reinhardt ever saw or we ever imagined. In Jesus' name. Hey, buddy, thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you for being available. And thanks for helping slay dragons. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for suiting up and going into the battle to win and walk over the enemy's intentions. Let's do it till Jesus comes. Introducing the new Stream app for Apple and Android phones. Now you can access all the wonderful content from the Stream in a handy, easy to use app. Special app only features allow you to customize your user experience, bookmark your favorite articles, adjust font size for easy readability, and quickly share articles with your friends and family. From breaking news to in depth analysis, the Stream app provides a Christ centered biblical worldview that will equip you to think clearly about the day's most critical issues. Search for the Stream News and download it today. 2020 has been a year when life feels hard. And I can only imagine what it's like for some of our younger girls. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.